the Israeli city of Tel Aviv. Its long seafront promenade is full of restaurants and cafes. Halfway along is a small bar, popular with holiday makers. On the 30th of April, 2003, shortly after midnight, the bombers struck. Three people were killed, a waitress and two musicians, and 55 more were injured. That night, one man prevented a massacre. The bar's chief bouncer, Avi Tabib, spotted the bomber, refused to let him in, and wrestled him to the ground. The bomber then blew himself up, Avi Tabib suffered horrific injuries. He had stared death in the face and survived. He is now back at work at Mike's place. So what did you see in these guy, this guy's eyes? Uh, <laughs> I can't really forget those eyes. Uh, what did I see in those eyes? Craziness. I don't know. That, that, that all I can think of. Uh, I just... Did you see murder? It was really weird to me that he was such in a rush to, to go in and have a beer. He has to drink a beer. This place and right now, and he has to have a beer. And something, I don't know, you don't think about that it's a suicidal bomber because it doesn't look like a suicidal bomber. He, he, he looked like a, like a drug addict. How far was he away when he went off? I was this. Jesus. And, and why did you survive? The experts say that because I was this close, the, the, the shock wave didn't have enough space to open up. And he said that if I was, I don't know, a few inches away, I wouldn't be here today. What made this attack different from all the others was the identity of the bombers. They weren't Palestinian, or even of Middle Eastern origin. They were British. We, don't. we have problems and we seek Tony Blair and George Bush to help us. Who's Tony Blair and George Bush? I wish for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala either to guide, to guide them or for his wrath to come upon these people. And that will be the best of the days for Muslims when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings his wrath upon these people. A few days before their attack, Omar Khan Sharif and Asif Hanif recorded a video will. They did it under the flag of one of the Palestinian militant groups, Hamas. Israeli intelligence soon discovered that one of the bombers was from Derby and the other from Hounslow in West London. They had no previous police records before traveling via Syria to Israel. What do you think about these two guys? I mean, what's, what's the big thing of like going into a place and blow yourself up. I mean, beside the fact that you decided on, on that your life is worth nothing. I don't know, the, the, the fact that he's not even a Palestinian, it's, to me, it's like, what the hell, it's not even your business. <laughs> These two British bombers showed that the cult of the suicide bomber is no longer confined to the Middle East or one particular conflict. It is now a global phenomenon. Any group with a grievance could copy this incredibly cost-effective weapon. Their targets are not occupying armies, but whoever the bomber declares is his enemy.